sometimes that one more hit of weed slows things down just the wrong amount. Um, I, I just graduated from college, actually. Yeah. Uh, just got my degree. Just got it recently, three and a half years ago. And, uh, I've already had my first college reunion. It was uh, an unexpected reunion. We all just ran into each other standing in line down at the unemployment office. Uh, and I looked around and I realized something was wrong in this country. When I looked around in line and sure enough, nine of my professors are also standing in line. And it's like, it's like there was this, like, this unspoken awkwardness. Like we put ourselves in like outrageous debt to go through and be taught by you. And now here we are, like unemployed. So, it's like, and that happened, like, standing there, like, it didn't happen, like, just, and that, that awkwardness, that awkward feeling, like, can only be compared to, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but, like, you're in, a, like, a, a public restroom, and you're washing your hands, and you look up in the mirror, and you see, you make eye contact with a guy who's crapping it between the cracks and the stall behind you. <laughs> almost that awkward. <laughs> right? So, I am a lady. To start sets, I'm a lady. Put it all out there. Um, I, uh, I'm kind of, uh, I've just been thinking a lot about like why women hate other women lately. What is going on? Why is this happening? Um, I, uh, I, a lot of women out there think that other women are going to steal their power. Like when I lived in a trailer park and I actually literally stole other people's power. <laughs> But, uh, use gloves, use gloves. Uh, but that's not true. We cannot steal each other's power. No one can steal your power unless you don't protect your phone lines. Um, that's not true. I didn't steal people's so. phone. I, uh, but I, but I think it's because, um, women, uh, it takes like one woman to give other women a bad name. Just one woman. That's how little proof we matter. Just one woman out there you know, with her vagina flashing or her tits flopping in open public and then other women get a bad name, no matter what we do, right? Right, sir? Yes. <laughs> but, you know, men are out there fucking pillaging and raping and, you know, I mean, they're just clubbing baby seals and they are still on top of the world. What is happening? Uh, so anyway, the Mercedes thing, what do they teach you uh, at the Mercedes-Benz School of Driving? Clearly, how to fucking merge across four lanes within about 100 feet. That's a, uh, something they teach you. Uh, how to be, how to try to convince people you're richer than you are and have your car repossessed. I have to think that there's so many fucking Mercedes-Benz in Los Angeles. City. You see them all the time. I saw three Bentleys today. And I live in Sherman fucking Oaks. I, I'm not kidding. I did see three Bentleys. Probably the same one twice, I think. But uh, two, two Bentleys at least. And anyone here have a Mercedes Benz? No one's going to fess up to that. No one's going to fess up to that. Then again, it's, a, it's an open mic. So if there's a lot of Mercedes Benz. They're 1983 and model, I'm sure. Uh, but I just feel like, you know, they say fake it till you make it out here. And I just feel like a lot of people are faking it until it gets repossessed. And then, then you're fucked. That's just what I think. Uh, that's my catchphrase, by the way, folks. I'm working on a catchphrase. That's the one I'm working on. I'm not really changing it, so I guess I'm not working on it. But what was it that I said? That's just what I think. That's just what I think is my catchphrase. That, see? Already people are remembering it. No, but yeah, like I told last week, uh, my wife and I were expecting a baby girl in June. Yeah, 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 thank you, thank you. And, it's, and it was crazy, like, as soon as he told me, like, something in my mind flipped. And when you watch the ultrasound, like, a uh, baby's heartbeat beats twice as fast as, like, a normal human being's. And on the ultrasound, it kind of looks like a strobe light. And I was watching it, and I was like, I got this, like, foreshadowing of being a dad where, like, all of a sudden I was outside Club Womb. And my daughter's like in there dancing on the table. She's got her umbilical cord pierced. I'm like, come on, honey. Come on, honey. Why don't you get down there? Why don't you get down? Some dude named Trent's hiding behind the uterus like, is your dad gone? I got these smeared off ice. It's fucking Drago. Yeah, smeared off ice. Fucking ice. My name is Connie Bryan. Do I seem tall to you guys? You know, I know God has to be a comedian. Because you know how most tall girls, their height is in their legs? God made all my height in my Adam's apple right here. Yeah. You, know, you know, the weird thing, I, 
was annoyed by it for a while. So many people greet me by coming up going, God, you're tall. Do you play basketball? And at first it annoyed me, but then I got used to it. And I want to give you guys some advice. Never go up to a little person and, and try to do that and say, God, you're really short. Do you play miniature golf? Jump kick to my Adam's apple. God, damn it hurt, too. Um, it's a lot harder work than, than most people realize, but you might have seen me at uh, various freeway off ramps. A lot of the uh, a lot of the full timers, they've got you know really oh, heartfelt yeah. signs to get you to you know roll down your window, spare some change. But um, I realize that I've already got a I've already got a great sign. I just uh, I just bring my diploma, frame <laughs> and all. <laughs> You know, people can relate to the shadow dreams as they see Peter Art's degree. <laughs> people feel bad at me and roll the next day, oh, stop, I'm so sorry, honey. Did you have a guidance counselor? Uh, you know, everyone feels bad. Even, even the guy standing next to me uh, felt bad and gave me a bag of oranges. <laughs> men, men are still a mystery to me. Uh, as, as hard as I've tried, I still haven't managed to find the right guy. Or even a guy who's usually right. <laughs> Just kidding. Not. <laughs> but I'm, I'm holding out. I'm holding out. And people say to me, well, that's your problem. You need to lower your standards. Right. And how's that working out for you, Einstein? Having a totally fucked up relationship with a meth head rather than no relationship at all. How's that working out for you? I think I'll just keep my standards where they're at because I really don't think they're that high. I'll share them with you. I'm holding out for a guy who's capable of thinking about more than three things. You thought there was two? Sex and sports? The third one is sex with himself. So here's the thing. It feels like to me that in order to win life as a man, okay, I realize that I sound like, as a man called me the other day after I did the set, an angry lesbian. Uh, I'm happily married, my husband is wonderful. I just get really worked up about this stuff. Like people obsessing over Hillary Clinton's hair and her face and how old she looks. You don't think she has other things to worry about? For fuck's sake. So, so I'm thinking about it and I'm like, I feel like in order for a man to win at life, he has to have like the car and the job and the beautiful woman and you know, all this stuff. Amen. A woman and it takes a lot. <laughs> And it's, all, it's a lot of work to, to get all that stuff, right? And it, it's, a, it's a what? A lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure on us ladies, too. But in order for us ladies to win, I'm speaking very gross general, generalizations here. In order for ladies to win, we just have to get the attention of a man. We just have to be like, hey, hey, hey. You know, like, that's why. That's why every time I uh, I talk to men, I just go I just go back to the toddlers and tiaras, which is where the sexiness for women comes from. <laughs> this is all like a, you know, just a little ooh, like a cake cupcake dress, you know, and then I get all the jobs, you know. I just realized, you know, last last week Lennis was the only woman here, and it's nice that we've got a few more women here tonight. Let's hear it for women. It's probably pretty hard for a woman doing stand. I, I only know improv, and I know it's pretty hard for women to do improv because men are real, real cocks to them in, in the improv world. And I would guess in stand-up, especially at the open mic, you're trying your shit, and like 95% of the people are guys. And it's like, why are you ripping? Why is she fucking ripping on guys? I love guys. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. Love you. Like I, I got a totally misogynist set ready, and I just already know for the people here it's going to be great, so I'm not going to do it either. Uh, I'm noticing some trends. We've only done this one and one quarter times, but I'm noticing. Do you guys know the uh, uh, Stadler and Waldorf, or Waldorf and Stadler? I think we have our own positive Stadler and Waldorf right here in the front. <laughs> oh, yes, Adam and Lee. Adam and Lee. They're very supportive, and they're and they're always lending some supportive uh, uh, ideas out there and stuff. I'm I'm all for it. I'm all for. It. I enjoy it. I think it's it's defining the night. When I have a daughter, I gotta stop some of my hobbies. And the one that I don't really want to give up is like every week 
Uh, I take all my, all my recyclables and I put them in a trash can. And then we live on a second floor and I kind of hang it over the top. And then I charge homeless people cigarettes to come in and take a swing at it with a baseball bat. <laughs> I call it a homeless pinata. It's awesome, but like homeless people never know when to leave. You know, because you could be like, yo, homeless people, the game's over, fucking go home. They're like, we are home. Then they piss and fucking jerk off and fucking look at you. And you're like, oh, God. I gotta stop doing that. I was working at Staples for a little while. If uh, any of you need, uh, need a job, Staples is hiring. Turns out their profits are way up. They're the ones who manufacture those pink slips and tell people they're fired. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I, got a, I, I, I thought that, like, you know, I, I did some writing, you know, I, some creative, I, I wrote a screenplay. It's a, it's a thriller. It's about this a young writer who murders his producer when he doesn't like his work. I'm just having, get, having trouble getting people to read it. And, and by the way, have you noticed, ladies, that guys even talk about sex using sports terminology? So, Bob, did you hit the big home run with Connie last night? Did you knock the big grand slam out of the park there, buddy? No, but I made it to second base in the first inning, which is bullshit, total rumor, because I pitched a no-hitter. <laughs> I know, I pitched a no-hitter, that's hard to do. He made it to first, but that was just a base on balls. <laughs> what it was is he tried to steal second, and I threw him out. <laughs> See, I'm a big baseball fan, and I think guys are on to something with this baseball analogy as it relates to dating. I think it's very helpful. We just need to expound on it a little bit. We need to add a couple more elements. We need to add managers, umpires, and the instant replay. This way, when things get out of hand, things start getting heated, my manager could call time out and come up to the mound. You know, like Bruce Bochy does. He said, listen, honey, okay? I, really don't, I really don't want to pull you out of the game, okay? But you're all over the place, and you have got to settle down. What do you want to do? You just want to give him the game? Is that it? You just want to give him the okay? You throw way too many pitches and way too many baseball balls. <laughs> and then when he does try to steal second, the umpire could be right there to make the call. You're out! After which his manager could come screaming out of the dugout too. He could stand all over the umpire and say he could solve the instant replay for the ruling. After which it could be clear it was a close call, but he was out before he ever touched the draw strap. Yeah, I watch a lot of prison documentaries. Right? Dateline or fucking uh, MSNBC all day Saturdays, right? And I figure like if I go there, I'm probably gonna be someone's bitch. I mean, if it can happen to Andy Dufresne, I think it happened to me. I think that's what I took from Shark Tank Redemption. But I feel like if I go there, I'm going to get a tattoo of a plumber right underneath my eyes. So with all the inmates who have the little water drop right here, I feel like I can fix you. <laughs>